Hey, I'm Tamara, the girl behind Star Cross Knits. Welcome or welcome back. Today's video, woke up feeling a little spicy today, so I'm gonna share my unpopular knitting opinions slash things that I personally don't think that I'm going to ever knit. I feel like I have to give a couple disclaimers. One is like, this is just for fun. It's not that serious. It was never that serious. Knitting is obviously, it's just like all personal preferences. Two is that I feel like I have to say probably because I have knitted some things now that I was never interested in when I first started knitting. So I'm sure, like God, I hope I keep changing as a person. <laughs> Maybe a year from now, I'll look back on this video and be like, here's all the things I said I wouldn't knit that I've now knitted. Three, you may be like, okay, you're doling out your unsolicited opinions. Like, who are you to even say this? And the answer is no one. Like they let literally anyone have a YouTube channel. So <laughs> I just love to knit. And I think it's interesting to look at, like some people are so drawn to knitting certain things that I have no interest in and vice versa. And it's just interesting to see. And I don't know, we're gonna talk about it. I'm wearing this top that I designed. I think I might try to like redeem this mess of a project. Um, if you watch my recent podcast episode, you've seen this like heinous monstrosity that I created. So I think I'm gonna try to like frog this while talking. Why? I don't know why, but I feel like certain things in knitting give me like weird textural associations with other things. One of those is definitely horseshoe cables. I mean, it does, it makes me think of a horseshoe crab a little bit, which I think of as this like, <sighs> sorry horseshoe crabs out there. I hope, I hope none of them are watching right now, but kind of like disgusting alien vibes. Um, there's something very like, makes me think of vertebrae too about horseshoe cable and then the same thing with the honeycomb cables i don't have like tryptophobia which is the fear of many small holes but something about the honeycomb cables gives me a little bit of that feeling like it feels like there should be little animals living inside of those or something and i've actually found this to be kind of hard for me to find cabled sweater patterns that I'm interested in knitting without like having to customize it because so many of them have one of these two things. And it took me a while to figure out exactly what it was that like grossed me out about them. But I don't know, those are two things that texturally just ache me out. No, no, no. The next one is circular yoke sweaters with deep armholes. So I almost just said circular yoke sweaters in general because I feel like most of the ones that I see have these super deep armholes, but I don't wanna be unfair and I'm sure there are some really nice circular yoke sweaters that don't have that issue. So I really wanted to knit a Fair Isle sweater um, last year. I really wanted to learn Fair Isle and I really wanted to knit a full on Fair Isle sweater and I had such a hard time finding any that I was interested in knitting because so many of them are circular yokes, which makes sense because you wanna just like be knitting in the round the whole time. And um, they just like a lot of them, the armhole comes down very deep. And I don't know why, it's like a giant um, kind of funnel down. And I loved some of the like color work motifs and Ann Vensel's designs, for instance, but so many of her designs have that super, super deep armhole. And it makes me think of like a straight jacket. Like I would feel so constrained. And um, maybe that's silly and it doesn't actually feel that way when you wear it, but something about it, like, I think this is especially bad when it has kind of tighter sleeves because it looks like it's just like distorting the proportions of your body, I guess. Like, oh, you have normal sleeves up till here and then your armpit goes down to there. I don't know, it just, it just really bothers me. Um, so, if you have any circular yoke sweater suggestions that have kind of a more fitted armhole, I would love to know about them. That's like one sweater construction technique that I've never done that I'd like to do. But if you this next one I don't think is unpopular anymore, but super bulky garments. So I've knitted, if you watched my, like my first six knitting projects video, uh, I've knitted exactly one bulky sweater and I've worn it exactly zero times. I just don't find these to be wearable. They're like really hot. They feel a claustrophobic to me. And you also can't really put a coat over them because your sleeve like can't fit into the armhole of your coat. I have one sweater that I knitted with a bulky yarn, but it's a V-neck. And I feel like that helps me a little bit, at least with the feeling of like claustrophobia. Um, but I'm just not really a fan of those. The next one is, this is controversial, is socks. So funny enough of my friends in real life who knit, 
I would say like three quarters of them only knit socks at this point. They're like dedicated sock knitters. So I feel like this is a very polarizing, like you're either all for socks or maybe you're like me and avoid them. Maybe some people do a little bit of both, but personally, I, I don't know. I just don't see the appeal of them. I think that um, I don't love knitting things on really small circumferences. So that's like automatically makes it tough to make a sock because the entire thing is going to be small circumferences. Like I feel like you can't really get into a good flow or rhythm because you're constantly having to either like switch DPNs or do magic loop. Or if you're knitting on a very, very small circular, like maybe you can kind of find a flow, but I have done that for sleeves and your hands really start to cramp pretty quickly. So there's that. And then I just, socks are not special to me. I've never been like a signature sock kind of gal, like funky socks. It's just not really my style. So I feel like all of the work that I know goes into making a sock, I don't think that I would like cherish the finished object enough to make it worth it, I guess. like. Especially because socks are an item that wear out a lot faster than other things, right? Like you're putting a lot more friction on them if you're actually wearing them. So yeah, I just don't really get it, but I did have one moment of like working remotely and thinking, okay, it would be, there's something kind of appealing of like wearing sandals around the house with your like cozy hand knitted socks. Like I guess I can kind of get it like that, but I don't know. My socks are very functional for me. And I also don't want to have to like baby how I wash them or I don't know, have to change them for different activities. I, I just, I don't know. I've yet to be, I've yet to get into a sock. I actually did visit a friend and she was like, oh, I have a bunch of sock yarn. If you want to just try knitting a sock while you're here, cause I didn't have a project. Um, and I tried it and I literally stopped like two rows in because it was just annoying. So not for me. The other one is knitted bras. I just don't really get these to be honest. I think that, I mean, I like to wear bralettes and I usually wear them, but I'd rather it be something that's like easily machine washable and not hot. So I just don't really understand the appeal. Like it doesn't really seem like that functional of an item for me personally versus a fabric one, I don't know. I just don't really, I don't get it. Okay, this one maybe is truly unpopular, but gifts, kind of. I mean, okay, I've knitted like two gifts before, I think, um, but especially gifts for people that I don't know super, super, super well, because I feel like I see a lot of people, especially around like Christmas time online, talking about how, you know, their coworker is having a baby and asked for a baby blanket and they like all of their knitting time is taken up with all of these gifts that they have to make and they have to start making the gifts in like March to be able to finish with them in time for Christmas. And I like, I guess I understand it if you love to knit, but you don't like or want or need more knitted garments in your wardrobe, I guess. Like if you, don't really like clothing that much and you just want to have a project and you don't want to like take up have it to take up space after you finish it i kind of understand that um so maybe one day like 10 years from now i'll be like i own every knitted thing that could ever be owned and i'll start wanting to make things to give away but for now i think it just doesn't appeal to me that much um i also feel like some people end up making a bunch of gifts from people who say like, oh my God, you knit, that looks so good. Will you make me one? And then they feel like they have to or something. Um, and I think, I feel like a lot of people who say like, will you make me X, Y, Z? It's like, they don't really understand what they're asking. They don't know how much time it takes. They might think that like, I think they just think that it's a compliment um, of saying like, wow, that looks really good. I would, I would want it. I think that some people maybe like misunderstand that or don't realize that it's just kind of a compliment that is sort of throwaway because I've definitely had some people that I don't know very well, like old coworkers or like people I hadn't really seen since college message me on Instagram and ask if I would make them something. And I'm just like, oh, thanks. Like, no, I can't make you something, but that's really nice. You'd want to wear it. Um, like it's very easy to say no kindly and just, I think as long as you like respond to the compliment underneath. Um, I see some people on Reddit sometimes, I feel like it vacillates between people who are like, 
Oh, my coworker said in passing that they'd like me to make them something, so I bought $500 of yarn and I'm making them a king size blanket. And I'm so stressed by it where you're like, what? Why would you do that? And then you have other people who are like overly intense about boundaries and they'll be like, oh, someone asked me to make them something and I said, how dare you ask me to put my time into X, Y, Z? Like, you can't afford me. It's like, you can just say thank you to the underlying compliment and move on. The next one is, I wouldn't make most things out of variegated yarn. So I think for sock knitters, it makes a lot of sense because you can have this like very busy sock and it's not gonna be like a chaotic outfit. And also some people just have a chaotic personal style and I fully support that. Me personally, I don't think it fits my style. And just about every time that I've decided to knit with a variegated yarn, I end up kind of wishing that I had just used at most a tonal yarn or um, maybe even just a solid colored yarn. I just think like a lot of garments, it ends up being intense and a lot of textures and stitch patterns and things like that just get like way too busy with variegated yarn. I think you end up with these kind of like intense stripe situations and I don't know, I, I struggle with knowing what to do with variegated yarn. I have some in my stash and um, I do think they look like really, really pretty when they're just wound up in a hank. I understand the appeal of it. And, but I feel like just about every variegated yarn I've seen, if it looks really beautiful in the hank, I'm like responding to the bigger pieces, like the bigger pools of color against each other. And then when I actually see it on a swatch, it's just like really, really busy dots or stripes. And it never really translates for me. So I don't know, I've yet to, I've yet to feel really good about a straight up variegated yarn in a garment. Um, okay, a bodysuit or underwear? So I've only seen one knitted underwear pattern, which was a thong. I've seen some bodysuits too, and like, while I love the idea of it, I think a bodysuit can make a lot of sense. You want like a fitted garment that tucks in really easily into whatever you're wearing on the bottom, but I don't understand what the crotch situation is like, and I don't really know if that's something that you can like ask when someone posts their finished object, but like, what is the deal? I don't know. I don't like the idea of having to like wash a, a, a non-machine washable garment every single time that I wear it because it's like we're very close to the skin in like your crotch. I don't know. Um, I don't really understand that. I don't think that those are like super popular, but I don't see myself ever knitting one. Cowls and balaclavas. So not so much the balaclavas that are just basically like a detachable hood. I think those are kind of cool, but for generally cowls and the really tight balaclava, maybe this is me acting defensively because I actually have an abnormally large, like hugely large skull. My head is really big relative to my frame. And I think without my hair, if I was had it all in a balaclava, you would just be like, holy shit, what is going on with that head? So. Maybe that's just me, but I don't think that I'm gonna ever end up wearing one. The next one is rustic yarn. So I don't think I'm going to knit anything with rustic yarn. And I live in Vermont where there's a ton of sheep and a ton of rustic yarn. And I think that's amazing. And I know that there's like beneficial properties to rustic yarn. Like it wears a lot better than really soft yarn. It doesn't pill as much, it holds up. Um, those are all great qualities, but I, I'm a little baby and I have sensitive skin and those garments made of those things to me um, literally feel like a torture device. Like um, I think like medieval monks used to wear things called hair shirts that were like a shirt made out of really wiry hair. So you wear it and it just like pokes you all over your body and I don't know, makes you think about your sins. Or I'm not really sure. <laughs> I've been read up on what the purpose of them was, but that is how I feel about wearing any garment made of rustic yarn. It literally feels like a medieval torture device to me and I can't handle it. I'm very jealous of the people who have, I don't know, like neck calluses or something, something that lets them keep yarn there that close to their neck and not like freak out and feel like they need to cut themselves out of their torture prison. I'm very jealous of that. I also don't think that I could commit to always wearing a turtleneck under a piece that I've made, for instance, because I don't know, I think I would just get hot. Like when I wear my warm sweaters, it's because I'm going outside and I'm gonna walk, whatever. 
I don't want more layers on top of it. Like the sweater is meant to keep me warm. I don't then need something to protect me from the sweater that I'm wearing to keep me warm. Actually, when I first started knitting, uh, I chose a yarn that was way too itchy for my neck. And the woman at the yarn store was like, oh, you should just wear a turtleneck with this scarf. And I was like, lady, I am not in deep enough yet to this hobby that you can suggest that to me. Like that is someone who's like very, very, very committed to knitting. Me, I want to make a scarf because I'm cold, because my neck is bare. So I'm not, I'm not like in so deep that I will then purchase a turtleneck to wear with the scarf that I've made that is not functional for me to wear by itself. So. The next one is blankets. Honestly, I think blankets just seem kind of boring. Um, you're working on like such a huge piece of fabric for so long. Maybe if it's a blanket that's like not um, repetitive, but again, this is just one of those things where like blankets are just functional objects to me and I already have a blanket to keep me warm. So I, I have a hard time seeing the appeal of spending all the time to knit a blanket when, I don't know, that sounds so ridiculous because like you could say the same thing about sweaters or tops or whatever, but I think I get very excited about making things I wanna wear. And so a blanket just feels like a lot of work for something that doesn't feel that special to me. And I don't know, I think I would also feel a little precious about um, using it on the couch. I don't know, I like spill my coffee on it or something. I, I just, I think everyday items like that, um, I'm not as into making like purely functional objects, I guess. Okay, this next one is assigned pooling. So if you don't know what this is, pooling is basically when you have a variegated or like a yarn that has multiple colors in it and you group the colors together. So there's planned pooling, which is where you use like the repeats of, you know, color changes in the yarn. You set it up in a way that they like stack on top of each other and you can make like plaid and stripes and really cool things. Um, so I think that's actually very cool. But assigned pooling is when you're knitting, like let's say you have a variegated yarn. So there's kind of like random segments of a different color yarn. So you're knitting as normal with like whatever the background color is. And then every time you hit this accent color, you do a special stitch just with that accent color. And that basically it's, um, assigned pooling because you're basically saying like, I assign this color to this stitch pattern and it just will show up organically on you know your scarf or your shawl or blanket or whatever, um, only in the places where you encountered that color. So I think it's like, it sounds cool to me and I like the idea of doing that. I think it sounds like it would be kind of satisfying to knit, but I've never seen one that didn't make me think of like, some kind of diseased body part. I think because it's like usually, you know, the texture with the different color, it'll look like mold growing on something or one person, I felt bad that they felt bad about this, but one person posted their, their assigned pooling project on Reddit and it was like a beige background color yarn and then pink was the sort of accent color and they did this sort of like circular loop stitch and it just looked like little buttholes all over their scarf, which once you see it, you can't unsee it. And somehow my brain has gotten me into this mode of just only seeing like gross body parts or like boils and like, it's so gross. I don't know. I, I can't see anything else when I look at most assigned pulling projects. So for that reason, I don't think I could ever do one, but I'd be interested to see if there are any that don't give me that response, but for some reason it's like a difference of color and a difference of texture against like a plain background feels like something organic and yucky is happening. Okay, this last one, which I feel like, I don't know if this will be the most divisive or if people agree, but a beige sweater or like a beige anything to be honest. So I truly want to know, like, does anyone truly look good in beige? Like make whatever you want and who cares if you like look good in it or not, like whatever, everything's subjective. But personally, I have never seen a person and been like, oh wow, you know what would really bring out their features is beige. I think beige would just look better in this. Like, I don't know if you've ever looked at, what is it called? Like getting your colors on color analysis. 
and looking at like what season you are like oh you're a winter you're a summer and it's like kind of families of colors and it's like has to do with contrast of your features and whatever i don't know your undertones i've never seen beige on one of these charts maybe i just haven't looked close enough but i truly feel like beige is just like not it's not a color that sparks joy for me and it's not even and i love a good neutral like i love neutrals i love caramel browns i love navy black white gray i'm into lots of neutrals but something about beige is just so it just bums me out i guess and it's funny i was looking at someone's instagram profile and it just looked so cohesive and like all so like color their whole color story of their instagram like you know looking at their grid was so cohesive and i don't spend a lot of time thinking about like what does my instagram look like or whatever but um i thought wow how do they achieve that is it with the photography is it with like a filter and then i realized it was just that everything that this person makes is beige so of course all of the photos of their finished objects and works in progress all go together because like every color every every yarn that they're using is like basically the same color or color family um and it was just kind of funny to realize but yeah not for me personally i even some creams that are a little too yellow toned i just don't i just don't think look great so those are my kind of unpopular opinions or things that i don't think that i will probably ever knit and obviously this is so subjective so I just thought it would be fun to go through them. I'd love to hear what are things for you that you don't think you'll ever knit, whether it's like a technique or a garment or the type of yarn, etc. cetera. Um, I just think it's really fun to see, like even in a hobby that we share, there's still so much variation within it, which I always think like, thank God for diversity of thought and opinion and taste, because wouldn't it be so boring if like everyone in the world all wanted and liked the same things? like we would not function as a society. So uh, much love to all my sock and shawl knitters and variegated yarn girlies out there. I support you. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me. If you had fun, I'd love if you subscribed. I share a new video every week and I do all sorts of knitting topics. And I also share all my projects on my Instagram and have a mailing list for tester calls and pattern releases and things like that. Thanks for hanging out and I hope I see you again.